Nung si Jesus po ay nasa lupa, He taught His disciple how to pray. Tama po. And Jesus showed us a three models of prayer. Okay? Question. Do you have prayers that have not been answered even after much persistence in prayer? Ako meron. Palagay ko kayo rin. Marami kayo mga prayers na hanggang ngayon ay hindi pa rin ano, nasasagot. Di ba po? Marami tayong mga prayers na sinabi, na inattered, pero hanggang ngayon, nagpasting na nga tayo eh. We come to the point, we twist the hand of God to answer the prayers that we've been asking. But up to now, wala pa rin. Have you ever experienced prostrations over an answered prayer? Kayo ba'y nakaranas na ng prostrations? Ayaw nyo na. Kasi ano, wala rin naman sagot eh. Yung iba nga, di na nagpipray eh. Kasi di rin naman sinasagot eh. Di ba? Kaya, pansinin mo, prayer meeting is the least attended meetings in the church, in the whole world. Bakit ganun? Diba? Have you ever wanted to give up because of an, unans- of an unanswered prayer? Have you done spiritual warfare only to suffer backlash or retaliations? Some of us uh, were been so active in the spiritual warfare in the past. Deliverance. Diba? And we saw the backlash against us and the family, in our family. Have you drawn back from the spiritual warfare due to repercussions? So these are the things that we need to answer. Okay? When Jesus taught prayer to his disciples, you can read in Luke 11, di ba? So chapter 1 ng Luke 11, the disciple requested Jesus to teach them how to pray. And the first thing that Jesus did, he teach them a parable about prayers. Sabi niya, which of you who has friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, let lend me three loaves. For friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to offer. Okay? And suppose the one inside answer, Don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are in bed. I can get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So, kaya ang sabi niya, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. So, in this kind of model of prayer, Jesus is teaching us that we can approach God as a friend. God is a friend. If you ask something, not for yourself, but for your friend, and you go to a friend of yours, that you want to give it to your friend, di ba ang tawag doon is intercession? So the friend-to-friend model is what? It's you approach God as a friend. Because a friend can ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, and knock and keep on knocking. And the, the important aspect of this prayer is that a friend asking was not ashamed to ask for aid even in the middle of the night. Kahit alanganing oras, because he knows that the guy behind the door is his friend. 
at siya ipakikinggan. So, these are all permissible behaviors in the protocol for this type of prayer. Pwede kang lumapit sa Diyos at sabihin mo, Lord, I need this. John 15, 14. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you servants for the servant does not know what his master is doing but I've called you friends. Friends of Jesus. Tama? Even Abraham, three times siya binanggit sa Bible that he is the friend of God. So this is a model of prayer that we can approach God. Okay? So maliwanag po. Ang unang itinuro ni Lord na prayer is what? A friend-to-friend -friend model. You approach God as a friend. And the protocol in this prayer is this. Walang hiya. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka dapat mahiya. Permissible sa protocol ng prayer na ito na makulit. Nakuha niya pa? Because you are coming to your friend. Next. The next model is we can find in Luke 11. 11 to 13. Diba? Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is now the Son asking the Father. It's about a Son approaching God as a Father. Diba? That's why I call it Son to Father model. Because the Heavenly Father's willingness to answer and supply. Nakuha niyo po? Hindi siya pwede magkamali. He cannot make a mistake na sabi niya, if your son asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake instead. Isipin niyo, pwede ba magkamali ang tatay na hinihingi niya a fish, ang ibigay ay snake? Magkaiba naman yung itsura noon. Parang exaggeration yung sinasabi ni Lord. Ho, kahit pasabihin natin magkamali ang ama, yung iyong ama sa langit, hindi pwede magkamali. He is willing to supply and to answer your prayer. And then sinabi niya, if your earthly father who is wicked knows how to, good, to give good gifts, how much more your father in heaven? So, Jesus tells us that the Holy Spirit is a good gift. Why the Holy Spirit? Bakit hindi na niya sinabi na whatever you need, ibigay ko sa iyo? If He can give us the Holy Spirit, how much more yung iyong mga ano, physical, material na pangailangan? Nakuha niyo pa. So, nung sinabi niya, the, He can give you the Holy Spirit, ibig sabihin, there is no exemption. He can give you everything that you need. And we, don't, we do not have to contend or oppose God. We don't need to contend with God. Kasi naririnig ko lagi yan eh. Contend with God. The word contend means resist or oppose. Why do you have to contend with God? Dahil hindi binibigay ni Lord yung hinihingi mo? We just get to cooperate with Him. That's all. Because you are a son. And He is your father. So that is the second model. You approach God as a father. But before you can pray to the father, you need to experience that you are a son. That is the reality. Because all of us are orphans. All of us are what? Uh, spiritually orphans. We were separated from God because of our parents na nagkasala. Nakuha niya po. 
Kaya sinabi ni Jesus, if you had seen me, you have seen the Father. Kaya sabi nga ni ano, ni sino yun? Ni Philip, show us the Father. Sabi ni Jesus, eh ang tagal nyo nang kasama ako. Hindi nyo, hindi nyo naintindihan na the Father is in me. But we need to remember that Jesus is not the Father and the Father is not Jesus. So Jesus was not saying, I am the Father. And He never said, knowing Him was the same as knowing the Father. Bakit po magkaiba ang knowing Jesus and knowing the Father? Kasi po, sinabi ni Jesus that the Father was in Him doing the works. He is not the Father. But the Father is in Him. Di ba sinabi niya doon sa ibang scripture, I only do what I see my Father doing. But He never said, I am the Father. So, the reason why Jesus came is to bring us to God, the Father. That's why sinabi niya, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. No, ako na born again noong 1986. Ang ang turo sa akin ay ganito. Tanggapin mo si Kristo para pag namatay ka sa langit ka pupunta. Now I realize because there is no revelation yet of the Father during that time. Langit ang sinasabi ng mga nag-nagshare sa inang gospel. But if you look at John chapter 14, sinabi niya, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father. Heaven and the Father is a different thing. And the very reason Jesus came here on earth is to bring us back to the Father because Jesus is the way. But the destination is the Father. Magkaiba po yun. Because the way is useless without a destination. Nasubukan nyo na bang lumabas ng bahay, sumakay kayo sa tricycle at wala kayong tiyak na pupuntahan? What happens? Paikot-ikot lang kayo. So every time you get out of the house, there is a definite and specific destinations. That's why the way is important if there is a destination. So that's the whole point of His coming, to bring us to God the Father. Because all of us are orphans. All of us are separated from the Father. At gusto niya na makilala natin ang amahan. Nung tayo na born again, alam niyo ba? Hindi kayo na born again just only because you repented of your sin. Maraming mga katoliko kung nagre-repent na kasalanan nila, nagkukumpisal pa sila. Sa pare, bakit hindi sila naboborn again? It is because the very reason that we are got born, we got born again, is because the Father revealed to us who Jesus is. Matthew 16:18, di ba tinanong niya si Peter? Peter, who am I? Sabi ni Peter, you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Ano sabi ni Jesus? Blessed are you, son of Simon, son of Barjona. It is not flesh and blood that reveals to you, but my Father. So, the three most important dispensation in the Bible. The number one is the revelation of Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world. Kaya sa Bible school, ang tawag dyan sa subject na yun ay Christology. Right? Second, the revelation of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit descended upon us upon men. And that is the second important dispensation, the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Right? Diba? It's a separate experience. And some of you experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit after you got born again. In Bible school, ang tawag dyan ay pneumatology. Yung una, Christology. Yung pangalawa, pneumatology. Ano yung pangatlo? Malakay chapter 4, verse 6. The last two verses. Before His second coming, He's going to restore the heart of the children to the Father and Father to the children. Why? 
Kasi pag hindi na-restore yung relationship ng father sa kanyang anak at anak sa kanyang father, sabi niya, or else I will come and curse the land. So we don't need the devil to curse the land. By the fact that the father will not be restored, our relationship with our earthly father will not be restored, restored it's enough for God to curse, to curse the land. So ang pangatlo is the revelation of the father. Wala nga lang subject sa Bible school yung paderology. Okay? Nagpapatawa lang ako. That's why in sab- ang sabi ni Lord sa Matthew 11 verse 27, sabi niya, No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. Tinan po. And anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. So in other words, you cannot know the Father by just reading the Bible or by just listening to a sermon about the Father. There must be what? A revelation of the Son in our spirit who the Father is. It is this Jesus Christ that will reveal who the Father is. Because there is tayong trust issue sa totoo lang. Matagal na tayong born again, yung iba sa ating pastor na, hindi pa rin tayo makapag-trust sa tatay. Kasi, meron tayong trust issue with our earthly father. Martin Luther, sabi niya, I cannot, in one of his book, I cannot pray the Lord's Prayer that says, Our Father who art in heaven. Because every time I say that prayer, I always remember my father who is a very di- difficult father. And I always thought that my God is a father is the same like my earthly father. Nakita niyo po. How the effect of the pain that the earthly father brought to us. That's the very reason why Jesus came is to introduce us back to our heavenly father. So, ang pangalawang model ng prayer is you approach God as a father. The first one, you approach God as a friend. Second, you approach God as a father. Pangatlo, you approach God as a judge. So, I called it, called it courtroom model. Okay? In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, he said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respect man, respected man. And there was a widow in the city who kept coming to him saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. The widow understand that there is a judicial system that he can get justice for whatever injustices na ginagawa ng kanyang adversary. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Alam niyo yung ibig niya sabihin? The same tone nung Luke 11. Sabi niya, kung kayo natatay na masama, marunong magbigay ng kaloob, mabuting regalo sa inyong mga anak, how much more ako natatay niyo? Ganito rin ang tono nung Luke 18. Sabi na niya, kung yung masamang judge, marunong magbigay ng hustisya so humihingi ng hustisya, how much more ako na mabuting judge na hindi ko bigyan ng hustisya ang aking elect. Who are the elect? His sons and daughter. Who cry to him day and night. Sabi niya, will he delay long over them? Paghintayin niya ba ng matagal yung mga anak niyang sumisigaw ng hustisya? Sabi niya, I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. So, this is the only kind of model of prayer 
that there is a promise of what? A speedily action. Doon sa dalawa, ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking. Right? But here, anong promise niya? I'll do it speedily. But there is a condition. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on earth? The condition is this. Will you believe God has a judicial system in heaven? Will you trust His justice? Dahil ano sabi niya? Righteousness and justice is the foundation of His throne. God cannot be impartial because His nature, He is a just judge of the universe. Kaya ang tanong lang, will He find people that will trust in His judicial system? Jesus is speaking about prayer. And He put prayer in a courtroom setting. And He provided a system that will give justice and relief from an adversary. Kaya pala, hindi dumarating yung panalangin natin kasi merong ano, hadlang, may adversary. Nakuha niyo po? And God provided a system kung paano mawawala yung adversary. Kasi sa Eastern culture, a widow was not respected person. Sometimes, they are considered as curse. Yung pamilya ng lalaki, ang tingin niya doon sa widow is what? Sumpa, kaya namatay yung kanyang anak o magulang o yung kanyang anak or kapatid is because of this widow. And the widow is what? Consider what? As a curse. Okay? So the judge did not fear men. Same true, God has also no fear of men. So the widow came to him. It means the judge was approachable. And the judge was responsive to the widow of his what? Uh, complain. Okay? So the widow understand that justice demanded an answer. Kaya nung sabi ng widow, get justice for me. For my adversary. So the widow understood that a court system exists in heaven. So the judicial system of God is available to everyone. But the question is, we must avail ourselves of that system. Parang salvation. Si Kristo namatay na para sa lahat ng tao. But unless the person will receive it, appropriate the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary, walang silbi yung ginawa ni Kristo sa krus ng Kalbaryo sa buhay niya. Nakawin niya po. Same true with the judicial system of God. Okay. Because the problem of prayer is the aspect of delay. Kaya, kinento ni Jesus itong third model of prayer because of delay. Proverbs 13.12 Hope deeper makes the heart sick, but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Luke 18 verse 1, Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray. Luke 18 is about prayer. It is also about the aspect of delay. Because in prayer, there is always delay. Kaya sabi ni Lord, do not lose heart. Huwag kang panghinaan ng loob. Why? There is always delay in prayer. Why? Bakit may delay sa prayer? Prayer in this manner meets a legal obligation because the spiritual world operates on a principle of law. Okay? Eh, Pastor, ano ba ibig sabihin mo ng law? Principle of law. Wala na ta we are not under the law. That's not what I mean. God operates 
the spiritual world, God, even the the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God operates on a principle of law. God cannot violate it. Example, niligtas tayo ng Diyos sa ating kasalanan, hindi, dala, hindi dahil sa mahal tayo ng Diyos. <clears throat> no. Because the losses, the wages of sin is death. So, yung magkakasala, dapat mamatay. Second, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. That's why God cannot just say, I forgive men of their sin. Why? There is a principle of law. God has to satisfy what the law requires. Kinakailangan may mamatay, magbuhos ng dugo para bayaran yung kasalanan ng tao. You get the point? He did not just, the, the Father did not just love us because He loved us. No. He first what? Satisfied legally. He legally satisfied what the principle of law requires. That's the reason why Jesus has to came to become man. Hindi man siya pwedeng uh, mamatay kung siya ay Diyos. That's why He became man. Second, ang Savior, ang Redeemer, hindi pwedeng tao. Kasi makasalanan ng tao eh. So that's the reason why God has to become man. And that's the reason why He has to die on the cross and rose from the, and rose from the dead. Para ma-fulfill niya ang legal obligation ng redemption. Tandaan niyo po, the word redemption is what? A legal term. Subukan niyo magsangla ng alahas. You are the owner Pero pag naisangla mo yon, hindi mo pwedeng kunin yon without paying first the principal and the interest. Nakuha nyo? Ang tawag doon, tubos. Nakalien. Nakasangla. Nakasangla tayo dahil sa kasalanan and what God did is He redeemed us. You see? So even though God is powerful, he cannot just say, okay, pinatatawad ko na ang kasalanan nyo. No. There is a principle of law. He has to satisfy. And because of that, the death of Jesus Christ gave the Father a legal right to be merciful to us. Nangkawa niyo pa? Because of what Jesus Christ did. So we have open prayed outside the legal requirements of the system God established. God has a, a requires, there is a requirements, a legal requirements. And one of the legal requirements of prayer is faith. Kaya ang tanong niya, will he find people trust in his judicial system? So the courtroom scenario of prayer is the only prayer model that guarantees rapid response from our Heavenly Father, the just judge. Nakonya po. There is a rapid response. Promise yan. Our aim in the court must be justice, not revenge. We go to the court because there is an injustice happens to us. We don't go to the court if heaven Dahil merong, merong kang kagalit, nireklamo mo doon sa, ano, sa korte sa langit. That's not it. Delay in obtaining justice is always relevant to the oppressed. Tandaan niyo po. And God always focus on the oppressed, on the injustices that has been done over us. Okay? So the word elect, also translated as chosen ones or favorite. So, God will respond speedily in this kind of prayer model. The courtroom prayer model. We approach God as what? A judge. Your father, my father, happens to be the judge in heaven. Question, is the courts of heaven biblical? The first five books of the Old Testament are the books of law. 
They are not merely religious law. Why? These are the laws that are being used by nations. It impacts the governance of all society. Di ba? Tinan nyo po ang constitution. Galing yan sa Bible. Revised Penal Code. Code. Sino nagsabi na bawal pumatay? Sino nagsabi bawal magnakaw? Sino nagsabi bawal makiapid? It's in the law. Nakawin nyo pa. It's in the law. So the first five books is what? It's about law. That we are being what? Using lahat ng bansa. Yan ang ginagamit nila. We have a book in the Bible known as Judges. It's chronicling the leadership of the nation. The first thing that God appointed is Judges. Doon palang nagsasalita na si Lord na siya ay ano? Judge. We have four books that chronicle the king of Israel who often stood as judges over nation. Remember si Solomon? He's not, also a king. He's not only a king, but he is also what? A judge. Remember the two mothers ay nagkiklaim doon sa si isang baby? Uh, he is the one who makes decisions on the controversy of these two women. We have the first king, second king, first chronicles, second chronicles. We have the book of Job. It starts out in a court in heaven, in a courtroom in heaven. Basahin nyo, Job chapter 1 and chapter 2. It's about the court in heaven. David voices his many defenses against his foe throughout the book of Psalms. Madbadalas mong mababasa dyan yung prayer of vindication. Sabi niya, vindicate me, O Lord. Mababasa mo dyan yung tinatawag na imprecatory prayers. He cries for justice against those who oppose him. In other words, David understands that the heaven is a court. He knows how to go to the court of heaven. Daniel described a court scene in, in heaven. Daniel chapter 7. Also read Joseph. Zechariah chapter 3, you can see Joshua the high priest. He is found in the courts of heaven. Isaiah, who is entrusted, in, instructed by the Lord to bring forth his case. The concept of the court of heaven has more than 3,500 supporting verses in the Bible. Mag-isip po kayo ng teaching na tinuturo nyo sa Bible, ah, sa simbahan o sa discipleship na mayroong 3,500 supporting verses. All the New Testament po yan, you can find more than 3,500 verses that is related to the courts of heaven. So we must understand, have you met the legal qualification? Kasi tandaan nyo po, Isaiah 59, sabi ni Lord, ang kanyang kamay ay hindi maikli para hindi niya tayo maabot. Ang kanyang tenga ay hindi sarado para hindi niya marinig ang ating panalangin. At anong sabi niya? It is what? Your iniquities, yung inyong kasalanan, ang naghihiwalay sa atin at sa Diyos. Okay? But your iniquities has separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden His face from you so that He will not hear. So, hindi po totoo yung saying na ito. Lagi ko itong naririnig. More prayers, more power. It is not true. Because when the legal requirements of prayer is met, hindi pwedeng hindi sagutin ni Lord ang panalangin natin, ang pag-ampu ta. Hindi pwedeng hindi niya sagutin yung pag-ampu. Kasi pag sinabi mong more prayer, more powers, it means you are trying to twist the hands of God. You thought your prayer is what? Powerful. No. We have to understand, it is not in our prayers. Okay? Have, have you met the legal qualification? That's the first question. Or have you wanted to bend the rules to answer your prayer? 
God cannot bend His rule. God cannot uh, take side with you kahit anak ka niya. Hindi ka niya pwedeng kampihan kung may legal right ang enemy. Basahin niyo yung Job chapter 1, chapter 2. Pinagtanggol pa ni Job. Pinagtanggol ni Lord si Job sa harapan ni Satan. Sabi niya, this guy is righteous. Apat na katangian ang binigay ni Lord. But at the end of their conversation, the devil was able to get a legal right or precedent in the courts of heaven. At anong sabi ni Lord? O sige, papayagan kita. Patayin mo yung anak niya. At kunin mo yung mga ari-arian niya. But do not take his life. Na-strike to doon si Job. Dalawang beses nakakuha ng legal right ang enemy sa buhay niya. But it was not mentioned kung ano yun. But God depended him. Nakuha niyo po? The spiritual realm kasi po operates on legal principles. If there is an accusation against us, whether it is true or not, we have to appear before the court of heaven. And if we did not appear, the enemy gets. He wins in the court. Our prayer must have legal putting to be answered. Okay, di ba, di ba ang tanong? When we pray, is it in the will of God? That is the legal requirements. Dapat yung pinagpipray mo, naandun sa will. Nakasulat doon sa will ni Lord sa langit para sa buhay mo dito sa lupa. Kung yun ay nakalagay doon, of course, sasagutin yun. May legal footing ang iyong hinihingi. Di ba? If your prayer is not answered, there must be some legitimate reason why. It's either hindi yan yung kalooban ng Diyos or there is a legal right of the enemy over your life kaya hindi niya maibigay ang mga bagay na yan. So once every legal reason is dealt with, the answer will surely come. Kaya mapadal, madalas yung maririnig sa bibig ko yung legal right. Okay? Kaya much of our spiritual warfare has been done while trying to overthrow something that has legal that still has legal ground to exist. I'll give you an example. Ilang beses na tayo nagpipray ng corruption laban sa corruption dito sa Pilipinas. Tagal na. Tuwing election, nagpipray tayo na magkaroon ng honest, di ba? Orderly election pero hindi nangyayari. We did a spiritual warfare about that. We rebuke the devil. We cast out the devil. In Jesus' name, we shout out to the devil. Di ba? Pero instead, wala din naman nangyayari. You know the reason? Because we are trying to overthrow something that has, that still has a legal right. So kahit anong sigaw mo, hindi siya aalis. Why? May legal right ang enemy. So the courtroom prayer is all about Defeating the enemy in the court. Okay? When we legally remove the enemy's right to impact a person, place, or situation, we will see breakthrough release to that person, place, and situation. Until the enemy has a legal right over the person, walang victory, walang breakthrough na mangyayari sa buhay niya. And what is the legal right of the enemy? Sin. Pa? Sin. Your personal sin and the sin of the forefathers. Oh, palagi ko ngayon, napapanood niyo sa Facebook uh, yung reactions, I mean. Maraming mga nag-react. Last November 4, nagsimulang mag-hearing uli tungkol sa Sogi Bill. nag nga si Atty. Lindun eh. Pinag-iinsulto uh, nung bakla na yun eh. Di ba? So, ito ang tanong. Di ba pinag na natin yan last year? So, ito ang tanong. Ano ang legal right ng enemy? Bakit? Aaprubahan na naman ng ano? 
ng Kongreso. At there are uh, information sa kung nare-receive na mukhang aaprubahan din ng ano, Senado. At ang presidente natin is in favor of the SOGI bill. <clears throat> oh. Now, ito ang tanong. Dapat malaman natin kung ano yung legal right ng enemy. Bakit yung espirito sa likod ng SOGI bill ay malakas pa rin, nakapasok pa rin dito sa atin. In spite na we have been praying and rebuking him. If we fail to remove the legal grounds, we also open ourselves to negative repercussions. Meron siyang ano? Legal right. So you don't have to go toe-to-toe with the devil. Alam niyo yung toe-to-toe? Ginagamit niya sa boxing. Pag yung dalawang boksingero, nagsabayan sila at suntok, parang si Pacquiao at si Marquez, yan ang magandang panoorin, yung dalawa na yan. Kasi mabilis, lagi nag to to sila. Sabayang suntok. May isang matutumba sigurado. Diba? Ang warfare natin against the fallen sons of God. When I say fallen sons of God, these are not demons. These are the high-ranking angels who rebel against God. Nakuha niyo po. We cannot fight him in a to-to-to. In a uh, confront Confrontational mode na sasabayan nyo sila, wala tayong power to oppose them. You do the battle in a courtroom correctly and you won't have to do it on the battlefield. Ang alam kasing natin na prayer ay yung tinatawag na battlefield prayer. Narinig nyo na yan? Battlefield prayers are the prayers that is addressing the devil. Di ba? Uh, paano ginagawa natin? I bind you, Satan, in Jesus' name. And then sometimes yung iba sasabihin niya, I bring you to the deepest part of the sea. They even curse the devil. And even they bring it to hell. Oh. Which is unscriptural, unbiblical. Kasi wala pa naman doon. At ang pwede lang magdala sa kanya sa hell ay ang Panginoon. We don't have any power. So we called it battlefield prayers. Yan yung itinuro sa ating prayer na model ng spiritual warfare na para tayong mga sundalo na nakikipag-away sa mga demonyo o sa mga fallen sons. Lalo sa deliverance, di ba? On the top of your voice, sinisigaw, In Jesus' name, lumayas ka! O, di ba? Kung ano-ano sinasabi natin. Hanggang sa napaos ka na lang, yung demonyo, hindi pa rin umaalis. Palagi ko may mga experience kayong ganyan. ba? Diba? Ang tawag doon, battlefield prayers. What we are being going to teach you here is a courtroom prayer. Pa, paano magpray doon sa korte sa langit? Kasi alam nyo po, ang tanong is, paano nyo palalayasin yung squatter? Kasi maliwanag sa Bible, si Satan is squatter dito sa earth. He has, he has no legal right to stand and to occupy territories here on earth. Especially in the Philippines. Pero bakit? Sino pa rin ang kumukontrol ng mga negosyo natin? Yung pa rin mayayaman ng mga tagasunod ni Satanas. Sino may kontrol ng media? Yung pa rin mga tao na tagasunod ni Satanas. Sino may kontrol ng gobyerno? Yung pare mga tao na hindi naman ang Diyos ang kanilang sinasamba. Nakuha niyo po. He is still the one controlling the kingdoms of this world. Kaya ang sabi ni Paul sa kanya, He is the God of this world. <clears throat> Paano natin tatanggalin yung kanyang legal right? If you successfully deal with the accusations, judgment, and other actions that have impacted our lives and the lives of everyone or over this, on this planet, <clears throat> we will see 
a massive change. <clears throat> Kasi ang problema natin, ang enemy, ano kanyang trabaho? Revelation 12.10 He goes to the court day and night and accuse us. Naitanong nyo na ba? Why the enemy accuses us first in the courts of heaven? Hindi ba pwede na? Di ba sabi ng John 10.10 10, He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy? Hindi ba pwede na? Patay na, patay na lang niya tayo. or nakawin niya yung ating soul or whatever. The truth is, the devil understand the courts of heaven. Sa totoo lang, kahit dulo ng daliri mo, hindi niya pwedeng pakailaman. He cannot even come na malapit sa'yo. He cannot even touch your family. You know why? Hanggat wala siyang nakukuhang legal right laban sa iyo at hindi nagpo-prosper yung kanyang accusation doon sa langit, hindi kanya pwedeng i-destroy. Hindi niya pwedeng hadlangan ang prayer mo. Because he has no legal right. Kaya di ba sabi ni Satan, yung conversation nila ni Job? Eh kaya naman eh, ni hindi ko nga matouch yung property niya eh. Nilagyan mo siya ng heads of protection. Ah. Oh. And the moment lang na sinabi ni Lord, o oh, sige, papayagan kitang i-destroy ang buhay niya, ah, ang kanyang property at kanyang mga anak. The hedge of protection was lowered. And immediately, nawala kaagad yung kanyang ano, mga ari-arian, nanakaw kaagad. Ganun kabilis. So the enemy understand the courts of heaven. He cannot just touch us. He cannot just kill us or destroy your ministry until the case that he filed in the courts prosper. What is a court? A court is a place where cases are heard and justice is administered between disputing parties. So a courtroom is a particular place where this administration of justice take place. So, yung hustisya, binibigay, walang ibang lugar, kundi saan? Sa korte, sa langit. A courtroom is a typical place where trials are conducted. Kahit si Satan, God is a God just, He is a just God, I mean. Kahit kalaban niya si Satan, He has to listen to His accusation. And a trial consists of the judge, my witness, my litigants, or the one who filed the case, my other members of the public who came to witness the proceeding of the court. You can see that in, in Daniel chapter 7. You can see there God as a judge. You can see there the, uh, yung tinatawag na, anong, cloud of witnesses. The sons of God was there. Thousands and thousands, millions of sons of God na andoon. Witness sila. And the litigant or the person who, saw, who brought the case is asked to enter the witness box. Remember, the witness box is on the left side of the judge. And then he will going to, ano, di ba, bago siya magsalita, magsiswear in muna siya sa Bible at sasabihin niya that I'm uh, pledge to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. Hindi lang yon, kasama din yung kanyang the other party will enter to the dock in order to, to defend himself. And the person who brought the case normally has witnesses. In the same thing that happens when you decide to initiate a courtroom prayers in heaven, may witness ka rin. Importante din yung witness mo. So, the question now is, what is your right to access the court? Do you have any right to access the court? Yes. All of us, all born-again believer, has the right to access the court. 
Why? Because you are a citizen of the heaven. If you are a citizen of the heaven, you have access in the heavenly realm. Kaya nga sabi ni Lord, you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. So pwede kang ano, lumapit sa Diyos. Pumunta dun sa judge at huming ng hustisya. Bukod dyan, you are an ambassador or the personal representative of God here on earth. If you are an ambassador, you are representative of Christ here on earth. That's why ang tawag sa iyo, ambassador for Christ. Hindi lang yon. You are also what? A minister of reconciliations. Di ba? 2 Corinthians 5.18 He has given us the ministry of reconciliations. Ano pa? You are what? A son and the daughter of God. At panghuli, you come as a witness in the ecclesia in heaven and on the earth. So later on, pag-usapan natin kung ano yung ecclesia. So, in other words, you have what? Legal right to appear in the court. Sa ating korte, yung lamang abogado na nakapasa sa bar exam ang pwedeng mag-submit ng petition sa korte. Nakuha niyo ba? Siya lang. Why go to the court? Ba't kailangan pa natin? Kasi daw po, in interceding for our loved ones and nations, you need to go to the courts. Why? The enemy has a legal right So kaya kahit anong prayer mo, hindi dumaas dumarating ang sagot dahil ano? The enemy has a legal right. Merong legal na karapatan yung uh, kaaway. So kung may karapatan siya, may legal right siya, pwede niyang hadlangan ano man yung nire-request natin. Nakawin niyo po. So, you go to the court in prayer or interceding for a loved ones or for a nations or a city or a province. And you go there to get charges dismissed. Kasi nga po, maliwanag sa Bible, the work of the enemy is to accuse us in heaven. Day and night. Inaakusahan tayo doon araw-araw sa korte sa langit. Ibigyan ko po yung halimbawa. Uh, yung tatay ko may naman na, na 8,000 square meters sa lola ko. Ang problema lang, yung lola ko may pinatirang squatter doon sa lupa. So every time na kami kumukuha ng buko, dinadala kami sa barangay. At nag-prosper yung kaso na yun napunta sa municipal trial court. Kaya nung one time na ako ay kumukuha ng NBI clearance that was 10 years ago, hindi ko nakuha yung NBI clearance kasi sabi nung taga-NBI, Sir, may kaso po kayo. Ako, ano kaso? I was shocked. Sabi niya, qualified tep. Nagnakaw daw po kayo sa sarili nyong lupa. That was the case. So, tinawagan ko yung kapatid ko kasi kasama din siya doon sa case. Eh. Sabi ko, anong nangyari? Anong nangyari dito sa kaso nito? Ah! Nagtatawa nga eh. Sabi ko, bakit? Unang hearing pa lang, pinag-present nung ano, piskal, yung kaso. Qualified tip. Kasi, every time na may kumukuha ng buko doon sa lupa namin, dinadala kami ng squatter na nakatira doon sa barangay. Kasi, yung anak niya, barangay captain. Nakita nyo how twisted yung, ano, yung justice system hanggang makarating sa, ano, sa municipal trial court. Tapos, sabi ng judge, ang unang tanong niya ay yung pis- tinanong niya yung piskal. Sabi niya, piskal, saan ka nag-aral ng law? Di binanggit yung piskal yung iskulahan. Sabi niya, alam mo, piskal, Walang batas sa langit. Wala ring batas sa lupa. 
na pwede mong idemanda ng qualified tep ang ear kasi yung lupa kasi nakapangalan sa lola ko ang ear ng lupa kaya sabi ng judge dismiss ang case bumalik ka sa, sa law school mo <laughs> sabi ng judge but the thing is ganito hanggat di na resolve at napadala ko yung permado ng judge na dismiss ang case nakarecord pa rin sa NBI yung kaso ko nakuha niyo po you cannot dismiss charges by just ignoring it you need to appear in the courts of heaven para ma ma-dismiss ang case na yan. And here, pag-usapan natin yung proseso kung paano mag-appear doon sa korte sa langit. Clearing a generational curse. Bakit? Lahat sa atin ay ano, yung ating mga magulang ay ano, unbeliever, at ang sabi ni Lord, tayo ay ano, yung sin from third to fourth generation. So, if you have sin, charges can be brought against you. Oh. That's the reason why, ano sabi ni Lord? 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. I'm telling you this one so that you will not sin. Sabi ni John. If you sin, you have an advocate in heaven. Ano yung ibig sabi ng advocate? Lawyer. So, every time pala tayo nagkakasala, the devil is charging us in the courts of heaven. At pag di ka nag-appear, may mangyayari. I'll show you how. Once charges are established, a court appearance is necessary. Kaya nga, madalas, pag ikaw sinampahan ng kaso, at there is a prami, prima pasi evidence na you did the, you did the, you did the, the case against you, I-issuehan ka ng warrant of arrest ng judge. Bakit? Hindi para ikaikulong. Para possibly ka, pero sa hingka, humarap ka sa korte at sagutin mo yung akusasyon sa iyo. Nakuha niyo po? Char- if once the charges are established, a court appearance is necessary. You can also make an appearance in a court for someone you have authority over. Like for example, member ng church mo, may sakit. Pwede mo siyang dalhin doon sa korte sa langit. You can make an appearance before there and you can ask the judge, Lord, bakit may sakit itong member ko? Ano ang legal right ng enemy sa buhay niya? Okay? Believing and confessing Jesus as Lord allow us not to be judged on our own merit basis, basis so that we can receive eternal life. Kasi ang tanong, eh, nabor na, na gina kami, namatay na si Kristo sa krus sa Kalbaryo. Bakit kailangan pa namin pumunta sa korte sa langit? It does not say in the Bible that the courts of heaven are no longer functioning and that verdicts has ceased to be rendered from these courts in this life. Read all the New Testament. Walang sinasabi na nung namatay si Kristo ay natigil na yung operation ng court sa langit. Only the judgment pertaining to the next life are cleared. Nakuha niyo po? Why? Because we take Jesus as Lord. So we have what we call eternal security. But this is the thing that we need to understand. There are consequences of sin committed on earth. And the Holy Spirit is kind enough to show us how to be free of them. Kaya sabi ni Lord, every time you repent, there is a advocate in heaven, a defense lawyer that would stand beside you and di depensahan ka doon sa korte sa langit. That's why sabi ni Lord, by the testimony of two or three witnesses, must any charge and every accusing statement be sustained and confirmed. So, if there is a charges against you and it was filed in the case in heaven, in the court of heaven, you have to appear. Why? Jesus is our advocate in heaven. But we need 
to make an appearance and be the second witness to what He has done for us. Nakuha niyo po? God cannot depends, defend you in the courts of heaven if you are not there. You have to appear. This way, that which we are confessing is established as a fact. Don't you know that every time we repent of our sin, the truth is you are in the courts of heaven. Hindi nyo lang alam. Every time, di ba? Example, sa church service, bago mag-pray si worship leader, anong unang ginagawa niya? Anong pinakakanta niya? Di ba? Nagpapakanta siya. Create in me a clean heart, O God. There was a time of repentance. Tama? Kasi sabi niya, before we enter the courts of the the presence of God. Let's repent for our sin. Ah, di ba? So what we do? We examine ourselves. And then we start to repent and we start to say, Lord, forgive us. Ganito, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan ginawa ako. And I appropriate the blood of Jesus. You know what, what, what are you doing? Where are you praying? You are in the courts of heaven. Hindi nyo lang alam. Because that's what Jesus said. He is our advocate. If anybody sin, we have an advocate in heaven. Kaya sabi niya, will not God depend and protect and avenge His elect who cry to Him day and night? So, our appearing in the courts of heaven is necessary to keep Satan from having authority over us. Tandaan niyo po, si Satan ay merong tinatawag na yung ah, si Satan ang nag-invento na kasalanan. Tama? So, in other words, meron siyang tinatawag na intellectual property right. So, parang ano yun eh, parang kanta. Nakakompose ka ng song. So, what you do, you go to National Library, ipapapatent mo yun, yung song na yun. So, pag may ibang kumpanya o recording company na gustong mag-record yan, they cannot do it without your permission. They have to pay you for royalty. Nakuha niyo po? Ganun din ang kasalanan. Ang nakaimbento niya si Satan. Ang royalty, minimum is 5%. Oh. So, ibig sabihin, kaya sabi sa Bible, for the wages of sin is death. Wages of sin, may bayad ang kasalanan. So, every time we sin, hindi ho libre yun. Nagbabayad po tayo, mga kapatid. May bayad yung sin. At, every time we commit sin, si Satan nagkakaroon ng authority over us. That's the problem. Kaya nga, marami tayo mga prayer na hindi nasasagot Kasi ano, may mga kasong pinag-file sa atin sa langit na hindi natin nabigyan ng pansin. Kaya naalala niyo si Simon? Sabi niya, Lord, hindi. Nirebuke nga niya si Jesus eh. Yung tungkol sa kanyang pagkabatay. Sabi niya, Lord, ipagtatanggol ka namin. Tapos nirebuke siya ni Jesus. And then, later on, sabi niya, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sip you like a wit. In Greek, the word sip you like a wit means the devil is demanding to bring you to trial. Anong ginawa ni Jesus? But I have prayed for you. The word pray is diomai. Nang ibig sabihin ay petition. Ang ibig sabihin ng petition is what? These are the things that we ask before a judge. Kaya ang isang abogado, pag siya ipumunta sa judge, ang sinasabi niya, ang tawag doon ay petition. Di ba? And the word petition in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, ang ibig sabihin ay isa lang. To request and to demand something from a judge. So kahit, di ba, tinuro sa ni Lord, petition, prayer, supplication. 
So, petition open means to make a formal request before a court. So, kapag tayo nag-pray, petition, ang ginagawa natin, we are what? Making a formal request before a court. So, Jesus made an appearance requesting strength in faith to be given to Peter and to those who followed him. Di ba? Kaya sabi ng 1 John 4.17, As He is, so are we in this world. Kung ano si Lord, ganun din tayo dito sa mundo. So, applying this verse, we should also be operating in the courts of heaven. So, tinan nyo po, for by your words, you will be justified and acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned and sentenced. So, our words have impact in the courts of heaven, which still operational up to now. So our words can get cases thrown out of a court or acquitted or pwede kang maano, makasuhan. Kasi we have an adversary. You know, the word adversary is a one who accuses or indicts another person or charge against us. The Greek word there is antidikos. You can find it in Luke 18 verse 3. Sabi niya, the adversary, sabi nung widow sa, sa judge, I have an adversary. And the word adversary is what? A person or a charge against us who accuses us or indicts another person or a charge against us. In other words, a prosecuting lawyer. Sa madaling salita, ang kaaway mo si Satanas. Satan means adversary. That's why the word Satan is not a proper noun. It's a common noun. Okay? And the word adversary in Greek is what? Antidikos. That's why charges are the basis for a court case. All an accuser has to do in a court setting is present a charge. A charge. Whether it is an allegation, sabi-sabi, or with some evidence to substantiate the claim. Kahit hindi beyond reasonable doubt yung ebidensya niya. It does not even have to be substantial evidence the evidence being brought the evidence being brought against us could be for something we have done baka matagal na nating nagawa or allege to have done or have never been done kaya mahalaga mag-appear ka doon sa korte because there is what we call in the court default judgment Ang default judgment can occur when the accused party does not defend themselves in court. Halimbawa, dinimanta ka, hindi ka nag-appear. At the end, God will make a decision based on the evidence na dinala nung ano, ng kaaway mo. Default judgment. Kasi wala ka sa korte. At that point, the judge has to the judge has to weigh a verdict based on evidence presented. I give you an example. Roe versus Wade. This happens in America in 1973. This is one of the celebrated cases when the pro-life Christians file a case against abortion. And the Supreme Court decided ito mabigat that abortion is a constitutional right of every American citizen. See? Palagay nyo, bakit pinayagan ng Diyos yan? Palagay nyo, masasaktan ang Diyos? Of course! Bakit hindi niya pinigilan? It's because the enemy has a legal right. 
Tandaan niyo po. The heavens belong to God. The earth was given to man. God cannot operate here on earth without His ecclesia giving Him the permission to do it. Even the devil cannot operate here on earth without people subjecting to his principle or ways. Nakuha niyo po? Kaya, noong 1973 hanggang 2015, na-count nila kung ilan na mga babies ang na-abort sa Amerika. Alam niyo kung ilan? 60 million babies. Oh, bigat nun ha. Parang isang bansa na yun. Oh. Job did not show up for courts and judgment. The, the opposite of that is what? Uh, Joshua the high priest in Zechariah chapter 3. When Zechariah was in court wearing a dirty linen that speak about sin and the devil was there. Read it in Zechariah chapter 3. And the devil is accusing Joshua wearing a dirty linen. Anong sagot ni Lord? Sabi doon sa angel, oh, palitan mo yung damit niya. Ganun na kasimple. Hindi pa nga dumating sa point na si Joshua, the high priest, ay humingi ng tawad eh. Nakuha niyo po ang kaibahan? It's because Joshua, the high priest, was in the court and Job was not in the court. What is the lesson here? We need to understand, we need to appear before the courts of heaven. If there is any accusation against you, you go there in the courts of heaven. Why? Job 23, you can read it. Job understand the court system exists. Minention niya. Okay? And all of you will say, Oh, that's not fair. Hindi naman namin alam. Hindi namin kasalanan. Mga kapatid, in a court of law, innocence o yung tinatawag na ignorance is not an excuse. Di ba? Polit ulit sinasabi, ignorance of the law excuses no one. Same true in heaven. We have to understand that the spiritual world operates on legal principle. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo eh, itong problema natin ng bagyo. Who has the right to stop the typhoon? Question. We as a Christian, do we have the power to stop the typhoon? Eh for so long, lahat ng typhoon dumadaan dyan sa Pacific Ocean, papasok ng Bicol. Laging dyan dumaraan ang bagyo. Question, can we not change it? Do we have the power to change it? Yes. Sinong magbabago noon? The Ecclesia of every province. The courts of heaven have rules to follow. Kaya sabi ko nga sa inyo, kahit anak ka ng Diyos, hindi ka niya kakampihan. God is always impartial. Diba? Job, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. That the enemy is walk about. Walk around. Walk about. Why? He is not all-knowing. Why in Job chapter 7, he traversed heaven on earth? Diba tinanong siya ni Lord, O Job, saan ka galing? Late ka na naman sa meeting. Eh Lord, galing ako sa lupa. Ano sagot niya? Oh, nakita mo ba si Job? Yung faithful kong anak. Pinagmalaki pa ni Lord. Di ba? He looks for evidence. Why he came down here on earth? He looks for evidence to disqualify us from the purposes of God. He wants to disqualify each one of us from the purposes of God. He cannot stop God from doing what He wants. Because God is so powerful. Anong laban niya? Created being lang siya. And the only way lang na kaya niyang pigilan ang gustong gawin ni Lord sa Pilipinas is to stop us. 
to accuse us in the courts of heaven. So the purpose of accusation. Accusation is a charge for wrongdoing. Imputation of guilt or blame. Yan yung accusation. Madalas, ignoring accusation is not dismantling them. They still have power to divert you from your purpose. Yung accusation. Kaya si Jesus, nirebuke niya si Satan. Ah, si, si Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan. For you are not setting your mind on things of God, but on things of men. Jesus identified the accusation and its intent to divert him from the purpose. Dahil sa nabi ni Peter, sabi niya, Lord, hindi ka mamamatay. Ipagtatanggol ka namin. O, oh, di ba? And because of that statement, nakakita ng ground si Satan para i-accuse niya si Peter. Accusation often comes in first person. Bakit? Accusation that taken to heart alter destiny. Accusation na pinaniwalaan mo, it will alter your destiny. It will affect your destinies. We can, if we can identify the accusation, we have uncovered his strategies. Kadalasan na accusation, nagmumula sa ating mga sarili. We accuse ourselves. At pinapaniwala tayo ni Satan, yung accusation na pinaniniwalaan mo galing sa iyo, hindi galing sa kanya. Kasi pag nalaman mong galing sa kanya, di, hindi mo yung paniniwalaan. And accusation open hide behind doubt. Di ba? And accusation are thoughts that are not generally edifying. Di ba? May mga thoughts na pangit ako, wala akong kwentang tao. Oh, those are accusations. Hindi ako mahal ng asawa ko, hindi ako mahal ng tatay ko. Oh, yun, accusation yun. Accusation can provide an altered view of things in our lives. And because of that accusation, iba ang pananaw mo sa buhay. Accusation may be veiled in flattery. Di ba? And accusation, when embraced, can bear the wrong fruits in our lives. Magkakaroon ito ng maling bunga sa buhay natin. Kaya nga, mahalaga na ating ano, alam kung paano i-deal ang mga accusations sa buhay natin. Accusation are open perversion of a promise of God. Di ba? Sasabihin sa iyo ng, ng demonyo, o oh, asa na yung pangako sa iyo ng Diyos? Akala ko ba, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. E ang tanda mo na hanggang ngayon, wala ka pa ring asawa. O, oh, di ba ganon? O oh, sometimes sabi niya, akala ko ba, mahal ka ng Diyos? E bakit hanggang ngayon, wala ka pa ring anak? Ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Oh, those are what? Perversion of a promise of God. So, accuser plant these thoughts to gain access to our lives. And the accuser want us to believe that this idea are ours so that we will follow them. And if an accusation is brought and no answer is given to the charge, the accusation is stand as a fact whether it is true or not. Kaya dapat, you appear into the courts. Harapin mo yung accusation sa ng enemy. Because the devil is objecting to the will of God based on our personal sin, our motives, or the unforgiveness in our hearts. That's why one of the hindrance in going to the courts is unforgiveness. Alam yung bakit? Sabi ni Lord, if you don't forgive, I will not forgive you. Every time you don't forgive a person, you know what happened? Literally, you are filing a case in the courts of heaven against that person. So every time you pray, sasabihin ng mga anghel sa langit, hindi namin sasagutin yan. Withdraw first your case against that person. Nakon niyo po? That's why sinabi ni Lord, if you don't forgive, I will not forgive you. Yun ang ibig niyang sabihin. Kasi you file a case, you become an accuser of the brethren. You become an accuser if you don't forgive. You become an accuser. You become like the devil. 
So every accusation, whether made by people, heard in your mind, or directly by Satan's or his forces, is an exposure of what Satan is using against you in the courts of heaven. Kaya anong gagawin mo? So, you go to the court. And you make a submission on whatever accusation that the enemy has accused you. So the enemy will use the accusation of men in the court of heaven against you. Gagamitin niya. Lalo member mo ng church. O, oh, di ba may mga member tayo na hindi natin kabate? Hindi natin close? O, oh, sila mismo nag a sa atin doon sa korte sa langit. Often the words of men will reveal the strategy of the enemy against you. Yung mga sinasabi ng ibang tao tungkol sa'yo, especially kapag nakatalikod ka, it will reveal what is the agenda of the enemy against your life. So if you listen to the accusation of others, parents, friends, pastor, teachers, neighbors, or co-workers, you may actually discern the particular tactic at work at a present time. Diba yung parents, they accuse your children, wala kayong silbi sa bahay. O, diba? Or the wife will accuse the husband, uh, babaero ka, wala kang kwentang asawa. O, diba? Yung asawang babae naman, they will accuse yung kanyang asawang, asawang lalaki naman, mag-accuse sa asawang babae. Yung magulang, akusan yung anak. Yung anak, akusahan yung kapatid o akusahan yung magulang. So sa loob ng pamilya, what happens? We start to throw accusation one to another. And accusation in defense happens in the court. Yan po ang katotohanan. You must defend yourself, but the defending happens only in the heavenly court. It's no other. You could have accusations, lawsuit, happening against you in a heavenly court at this very minute. But the question is, do you know how to defend yourself? That's a question. Do you know how to defend yourself? The reality is the majority of people alive today do not know this place even exists. The enemy relies on your ignorance of what is legally available to you to defeat you. Hindi niya ipapaalam yan na merong korte sa langit at meron kang ano, parakletos or meron kang advocate, may lawyer ka. Libre yung lawyer mo. He will defend you in the courts of heaven. And the enemy relies on your ignorance. You need to know the scripture. How to get there. Yan ang mga pag-uusapan natin sa mga susunod na meeting. How to get to the courts of heaven. What to do when you are already there in the courts of heaven. How to make petitions in the courts of heaven. How to intercede in the courts of heaven. I already have a lot of classes already. I have present two, uh, one classes that, uh, uh, dalawa pala, natapos na. Nagpachutor sila sa akin, papaano ang pumunta sa korte sa langit. And we make submission in the courts of heaven. Almost kalahati nung nag-attend, nag-submission sila sa korte sa langit. And they have all testimonies. They have testimonies. From testimonies, what happened after they make submission into the courts of heaven. They see immediate... Meron pa nga isang yung nanay, yung anak niya na lalaki, may asawa, pero yung asawa, pero yung lalaki na anak niya, merong other woman. So, ilang taon na, prayer fasting na, lahat na ginawa na niya, hindi pa rin umaalis 
kumakawala doon sa babae. Eh sabi ko, let's bring it to the courts of heaven. So, he asked the Lord, ano yung legal right ng enemy? So, inisa-isa yung mga kasalanan. We brought it to the courts of heaven. Tumawag sa akin yung pastor. After a day, biglang nag-turn around. Nag-turn around yung lalaki. Iniwan yung kabit. Ayun na, nasa ano na, nasa asawa na. You see? So, the reality, majority of the people, even the Christians, do not know that the courts of heaven exist. Kahit, halos ba kayo, mayroon kayong kaso dyan sa korte sa lupa, pwede niyong dalhin yan sa langit. For immediate ano, uh, resolution of the case. Kasi alam mo ngayon, ang kaso sa lupa, tumatagal ng taon-taon. Di ba? Kaya, alam niyo yun, justice delayed, justice denied. So that's why you, know, you need to know the scripture. So, yan po ang ating uh, gagawin. We will teach you how to go to the courts of heaven. How, you, how are you going to make petitions for yourself, for your family, for your members who are sick, Oh, for your members that they are having difficulties in their business, pati negosyo, pwede nyo dalhin sa korte sa langit. Okay, so, okay, so any question? <laughs>